Persians. So this video is about the Persians. Um, I felt that they needed their own video because a lot happened in the ancient world and they were the movers and drivers of that particular era. So we'll make a start. Now the question is, who were the Persians? Well the term Persian is, uh, well it's Latin, it's a Latin term. The Greeks actually called them the Fars people uh, after the type of language which they spoke, which was Farsi. From the Assyrian sources, we understand that Fars was actually spelt with a P rather than an F. Farsi. P A R A H S E. Farsi. Um, it was a region which originally belonged to the Sumerians. We think that the uh, this uh, Iranian tribe um, migrated from the Sagaris Mountains into a part of Samaria. Um, these were Iranian people. Um, they adopted the, the name of the region to identify their tribe and the language which they, they spoke, which was Farsi. There was a second uh, group of Iranians who had migrated into uh, this area and they were called the Medes. The Medes Iranian group settled um, in Sumer and Assyria uh, from 900 BCE so they came first. By 700 BCE they established themselves as a vassal state to the Assyrian Empire so they had a, a certain amount of flexibility for um, uh, home rule. There was an alliance formed in 616 BCE between the Medes and the Babylonians to uh, overthrow the Assyrian Empire. So it's quite desperate when people take military action. Remember the uh, archaeological model for all civilizations. You have elites and you have the masses. The masses cooperate with the elites because they get benefits like peace and stability and things like that. The elites gather resources and with surpluses they build monuments. So for um, the Medes and the Babylonians to want to go to war, risk their lives, risk their, their position within an established empire, they were either opportunists or they were being overtaxed. So those are really the two things that drive um, civilizations to rebel against their overlords. So 616 BCE, the uh, War of Independence, so to speak, starts. By 609 BCE, so seven years of uh, warfare, they eventually overthrow the Assyrian Empire. Now, in this area where you have the Medes, you have the Farsi people, they're Iranian too, and they are part of the Medes civilization uh, and uh, vassal state which goes to war with the Assyrians. So that's where the Persians originate, a second tribe coming out of the Zagros Mountains and emigrating into an Iranian speaking region of Sumeria. With this migration from the Zagros Mountains into the Medes region, by 552 BCE, the Farsi Iranians had established a vassal state within Medes. So why were they tolerated? Well, they both came from the same ethnic group, so they were both Iranian um, origin, coming from um, somewhere out of the Zagros Mountains. And obviously the Farsi people, the Farsi Iranians, were cooperating with the Medes people. Two years later, the Farsi overthrew the Medes people. So once they established their, their uh, vassal territory, they organised themselves and became free. And, uh, well, free, well, they overthrew their Medes masters and took control of the, of the region. So this independent vassal state who overthrew their overlord masters 
was led under the leadership of uh, Cyrus the Great in 550 BCE. Cyrus was actually Cyrus II. He conquered um, the Assyrian Empire, the Lydian Empire and the Neo-Babylonian Empire. By 530 uh, BCE, he had died and was succeeded by his son Cambyses II. Okay? And Cambyses conquered Syria, Canaan and Egypt. The expansion of the uh, Farsi people, or the Persians as we now call them, was based on conquest. And conquest is very difficult. It's a, a time of change and instability and people aren't quite sure of themselves. And you can see uh, uh, why that, that is from what actually happened next. Three years later, Cambyses II was dead in 525 BCE. Now, Cambyses' successor was Bardiyar, and he was murdered by Darius I. Meanwhile, back in Egypt, Petsubatus III led a revolt in Egypt in 522 BCE until 520 BCE. It's the first marched on Egypt and became Pharaoh in 522 uh, BCE. So he crushed the, rev the actual revolt. Once Darius took the first took control, he really misjudged the Greeks. I think he saw them as a developing civilization rather than an independent group of city-states. Had he, had he forgot that this was a civilization that banded together on an expedition to Troy? The Greeks had been refining their craft of warfare by fighting each other as city-states for the last 800 years. So these are crack soldiers in comparison to the Persian soldiers. The Persian home guard, their mortals, were probably well trained. But Darius I was relying on conscripts from different parts of his empire. Uh, and they're not going to be uh, um, highly motivated to fight for a foreign ruler. Darius demanded earth and water from the Greeks, the independent Greek city-states. Most of them um, uh, complied with this request, except for Athens and Sparta. And he misjudged that situation. Darius died in 486 BCE. He was succeeded by his son Xerxes I. To give you an idea of what's going on in the Mediterranean world under a world which is governed by Darius. Certainly the one thing he did do, which he shouldn't have done, was he stirred up a sleeping volcano, the Greeks. <laughs> The uh, first Greeks were the Cretan Greeks, the Min Minoans, and they'd been around for a long, long time, I think around about 1400 BCE. Then you have uh, the um, Aeolian Greeks, they're the blonde haired blue eye ones, you know, the ones from uh, Thebes and Thessaly. Uh, and then you have the uh, Dorian Greeks, who uh, became the Spartans. Now, Athens had a policy. They uh, expanded from their mount at uh, Athens down into the lower parts of Athens and then they built a curtain wall around their city to protect it. And the population kept growing. So eventually they came up with the idea of having a lottery. And this was copied by a lot of the other Greek states as well. If your name was called out in the lottery, they bundled you onto a ship um, with supplies and then they off you went in, into Aegean and you founded a colony. So a lot of the uh, islands just off the coast of modern day Turkey were founded by those Ionian Greeks and um, those Greek states are what started the conflict between Persia and Greece. Darius was asking for the Greek states to recognise his title over these Ionian islands and they refused, you know. They were uh, highly independent 
They fought each other for 800 years just to establish that states could be independent of each other. The last thing they were going to do was was give in or, or bend the knee to any of these uh, uh, foreigners who were not Greek. So Darius invaded Thessaly. He also subdued Macedonia, who, who subjugated themselves to him. He then um, fought a large Greek contingent at Marathon. Remember Marathon? 490 BCE, and unfortunately he lost the battle, and the Greeks survived. So when Darius I died, Xerxes I came to the throne, and he's a character in the half. 486 BCE to 465 BCE. He's diverting all of his resources in defeating the Greeks, and that has a big effect. There is a revolt in Egypt. Then there are two revolts in Babylon. So obviously this overtaxation and this focus on, on uh, invading Greece was something which upset a lot of people within his empire. Egyptians were conscripted into the Persian army and also Babylonians, uh, Hebrews, um, Semitics. All over the empire, he created this international army to invade Greece. They built a pontoon of, bridge of boats across the Hellespont between Asia and Greece. And he was going to march his army over there. The audacity of it all. The first pontoon uh, bridge, um, uh, boat bridge, failed. And then he had it re-strengthened and the second one was successful and he marched his uh, army over. Amazing feat to do. Uh, uh, you know, we're only talking about wood and, and uh, wood and rope to uh, keep an army afloat. So Xerxes the, marched his army into Greece and was successful until he came up against Leonidas at Thermopylae. And of course, we all know that the Spartans held off this great Persian army. And it was only through um, spies and, and betrayal that this Spartan contingent was eventually overcome and defeated. Xerxes did lose a big naval battle and he was fearful uh, that his army would be stranded in Greece. So he marched them back across the Hellas Point pontoon bridge back into his Persian Empire and he started completing his father's uh, building projects at Susa and Persepolis. Now Xerxes was um, assass assassinated in 465 BCE um, by a chap Artabanus called Artabanus himself was actually killed and Artabanus was killed by Atrexus the first, who killed Xerxes' sons, and then Artabatus' sons as well. Uh, so he killed the uh, next Arius, who was Xerxes' son, and he killed Artabanus and his sons. You don't want any contenders to the throne, I suppose, if you're a usurper. So he did this in 465 BCE. The impression I get is that there is rebellion everywhere. Nobody is happy with this overtaxation, and it's all because Darius I took on the Greeks. If he had just left those Ionian islands alone, increased a, a, a navy to uh, subdue those Greek pirates, which was probably the main reason why he wanted those uh, Ionian islands, uh, he could have had a really good empire and invested wisely throughout. But he didn't. He, he diverted all of his uh, resources into warfare, and that can drain an economy. So Darius II learned from his mistakes, learned from Darius I's mistakes and Xerxes' the, uh, uh, first mistakes, and decided to uh, fund the Spartans to um, go to war with Athens. And that's what they did. They funded the Spartans, he built a navy, defeated the Athenians, and then got the Athenians to pull down the walls around their cities. 
that was all funded by Darius II. If you've enjoyed this video uh, with the content, please press your subscribe button, thumbs up if you liked it, I haven't seen many thumbs up, and please leave a comment. And I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.